Hey everybody, welcome today. <laughs> Look what I got here. So guys, I got one of these deals I just couldn't pass up again. Anytime I can get a scrapyard Massey Ferguson for scrapyard price, well, I just got to take it home. The tough part's going to be getting this one home, which I think we've got that figured out, but we'll see. As of uh, the other day here, frost, is, frost restriction laws kicked in, so we can't semi it anymore. But uh, first things first, look at the tires on that. That is some serious rubber. But anyway, never mind that now. Um, I decided to get this for a couple reasons. One, well, price is perfect. Two, it's right up my alley. Engine seized up, had some hydraulic problems, hasn't run in exactly 20 years. And I can really vouch for that because I uh, this tractor's not far from my house and I saw how it's been sitting exactly like this. The last time I saw it move was around 2003. And uh, that's after that, I guess they had some troubles with it, started to work on it. There she sat, end of story. So I thought, you know what, why not? Couple other things, guys, that are kind of kind of nice about this one. I think that although it looks like hell, I think there's a lot of stuff on this one that's in a lot better shape than it is on my 1805. I mean, just little things. Now, it says it's got 36, 36 hours on it. I have no idea if that tack works or not, but hey, if it does, that's great. Now, the uh, the other the reason this tractor is supposed to have been parked was because of steering issues and the uh, steering orbital motor is right behind here and as you can see she's definitely got some oil blood around it and someone has started to do a little operation there and I think the guy that owned it before the guy that has it now well you can't see in there but maybe they weren't familiar with these but he's got everything taken off the wrong pump so but nevertheless nothing I'm not too concerned about it so but I mean just the clutch pedal pushes nice like it feels perfect transmission shifts I mean all the linkage is super tight inside this thing guys and that's something that on my 1805 nothing's tight on that thing that poor old thing is worn out so I thought, hey, you know, if nothing else, I mean, if I don't restore this one to use it as a tractor, at least I probably have a whole lot of parts in this thing that are, uh, you know, better than the ones I've got already. So, yeah, like I said, guys, it's not the worst. I mean, there there are worse machines than this one out there, so. But big issues first. Let's get down here. Even yeah, the door kind of, the door shuts pretty tight, too. But, uh. Yeah, nevertheless, guys, so like I say, if you're familiar with me working on these before, they've got that pump off. That's the auxiliary hydraulic pump. That has nothing to do with the steering. This is the steering pump. They got some hoses hanging out, so there's definitely a lot of evidence of something, something that has gone on here. I just don't know what it is. And I think on the other side of that token, they're going to have to unseize the engine because I can't twist it over by hand, first of all. And it's been sitting like that since the mid-2000s. So the engine might be completely junk. I don't know. But again, I only had to pay scrap price for the machine. So if I can take what I need from it, if nothing else, then uh, it's worth every penny of that to me. Look at that baby rolling in here. Made about a 30-mile trip here. That is awesome. Perfect. I'm kind of glad those tires made the trip. They were, I was a little worried about them, but by golly, it worked out. Look at 
that. Ain't that slick. Well, guys, first obstacle. Got a pipe wrench on the dumbbell in there. Let me grab a pipe. Yeah, that's why they call that a pipe wrench, so you can put a pipe on it. And uh, see if we can get that thing to break loose. I might not get lucky with this one. Or I need a bigger pipe. Oh, a crater house. Oh, okay, it turned. <clears throat> it's not totally seized up, so that's good. I'm gonna have to work this a little while, but at least it's not totally locked up tight. What do you think, princess? That's a lot of tire for you to sit on, isn't it? Yeah. Goofy cat. At least you're outside again, now that it's nice out. Well, friends, since I can now, now I know the engine will turn a little bit, my next obstacle, I'm gonna have to crawl up under there, take my trusty pipe wrench, Turn the motor back and forth slowly and easily till I can make sure it'll turn a complete revolution. That might take a few minutes. I'm going to try it for a little while. If it gets to where it'll go to a certain point and go back to a certain point, I might have to dig a little deeper from there. But like I say, main goal here, I just want to see if I can get the thing to turn 360 degrees and then we can start the fun stuff. I'm gonna to have to investigate that a little further because that stops, I mean, it rolls nice till it hits its stop and there's either something severely wrong underneath or there's a lot of water in one or more cylinders. So let me get back with you in just a minute here. Whew. Well guys, that, uh, hi, here I am. That oil came out of there looking really, really bad. I mean, I've seen some bad oil, but that's, but aside from a little sludge, there wasn't any antifreeze in it or anything, so got to take the good with the bad there. But I think meanwhile, it's, I'm just going to whip all these bolts off the oil pan here and make sure that the bottom end is still, you know, intact. Here we go. What surprise us await us on the other side here? Okay. That looks pretty darn good in there. Let me get this out of the way. Clean it out before I put it back on. I know that's going to be practically impossible to see, but um, everything is as it should be. And honestly, I could tell this motor's maybe been gone through once because I got two sevens and a five there, so maybe this motor's been rebuilt at some point. Wouldn't surprise me much. It is 50 years old, so I mean, it would make sense, but so I guess on that, that's good. But I had to change the oil anyway, so I mean, I guess that's all right. Oil pan gaskets in one piece, so I can put some silicone on that, stick that back on. 
Um, but now I gotta figure out which cylinder's holding me up so I know where to start digging from the top, I guess. Well, friends, let me fast forward you two days into the future here. So I went and I did a couple things. I wasn't making very much progress getting that thing to turn more than a quarter turn either way. So I tried a few things. First thing I did, I rolled it up to where it was just not moving. I thought there was a possibility of water inside one of the cylinders. It seems like that would be more unlikely, but I, you know, never hurts to try. So I did the wise but unwise thing. I pulled the valve covers off both sides, just took a screwdriver and opened the exhaust valves a little tiny bit to see if I got any pressure release, water release, anything, any moisture whatsoever. I got nothing. There's no water in the cylinder. So after that, I decided it might be wise to put some PB blaster into the intake and just whatever valves were open, those are the cylinders it's going to get to. By golly, two days later, success. Tell you what, guys, you mess with the bull, you're going to get the balls. We got a 360 degree turning engine now. So, I went to my local auto parts store. I got an ignition switch because that one's toast and the key is missing and I couldn't turn it with a screwdriver. Might not work at all. The wiring looks pretty awful in there. Got to dump a little bit of oil back in the engine. And of course, welcome to small town America. Nobody in town's got fuel of oil filters for a 3160 cat. So unfortunately, I'm gonna put new oil in it, pump it through the old filters, I mean, positive side I did get all the sludgy old oil out of it so it's probably only got sludgy oil in the filters <laughs> maybe it'll pump that through doesn't matter that's what's happening and we got to get the battery well I would okay well looks like we have one battery and no cables for a second one so I don't know how I feel about that every one of these I've had seems like they like two batteries a lot more than they like one battery but I guess we'll pull that battery out of the combine, stick it in here. It is today the warmest day that we're gonna have. I mean, wasn't it two or three weeks ago we were doing cold starts on these 3208s when it was zero out? It's gonna be 50 today, so chances of success are three in 10. I would love to be able to prime the fuel system. Now, with that being said, you know, on your 3208s, you got the primer pumper right here. 3160's got nothing, and I mean nothing. Fuel line coming in, fuel line going out, filter. It has a mounted pump on the other side on top. Would you believe me if I told you there is not a lever on that pump to prime anything? How did you guys change filters on these things back in the day without being... It doesn't make sense. Maybe I'll get lucky. The fuel pump still, or the fuel system still has some prime to it. I can't imagine how, but... I got nothing to lose by putting oil in it, putting the battery in it, twisting the key, and just crossing my fingers and seeing what happens. So I got a little bit to do here. Let's get after it. Yeah, so I got the switch out here, guys, and uh, <laughs> friends, these look bad. I'm gonna do the best I can to tape them up, but at some point in time in this tractor's life is going to need some serious electrical attention. And there, oh, perfect, got a key. Next. Oh dear. Maybe we'll put a little antifreeze in this thing. That's gonna be important real fast here. Two gallons later, it's better than nothing. Well, this is gonna make things interesting. Here's my oil fill. And you can see, even though the sun really sucks right now, there's a lot of space for someone to get in there. So what I'm gonna do, got this hole here, I'll just shove the old funnel through there and what do I need about 
about 18 inches of hose. It's about 18 inches, guys, right? Run it right down in there, and I should be able to fill that from the top quite a little bit easier. There it is. A little plug. That's a terrible spot for that. We'll set it over here instead so I can run over it later, provided this tractor starts. Put that on the funnel. Excellent. I did what I thought would be smart here, fellas, and put that inside the house last night because I had a feeling I was going to need it today and it's going to pour in the engine a whole lot nicer at 70 degrees than it is at 35 or whatever it is out here now. Okay, well, aren't you a son of a bitch? Figures. There, we'll just let that uh, kind of drip drain in there and let me go round the battery up out of something here. You know, I got to thinking about it. I think I'm just going to go ahead and drop a second battery in here anyway. I wish I had some bigger cables, but this is what I got, so it's what I'm using. It's better than nothing, I guess. Well, there. Two batteries deep. That'll give it somewhat of a fighting chance. Hopefully. Maybe. Guess we'll find out. And guys, lastly, before I go twisting on this thing, I need to get those belts off of that power steering pump and get them kind of tied up out of the way. I got hoses everywhere that are unhooked, so if there's any oil left in the transmission, it's going to find its way all over the place in a damn hurry. So let me get those off and maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll twist the key and prepare for the worst, see what happens. Well, guys, I think we're, we're there. Belts are out of the way. I think I got my ducks in a row right now. Aside from not having the injector lines loose, I'll roll it over a little bit and see if it does anything before I get to that point. But I got the intake tube sticking out just in case I gotta shove that two by six on there in case this thing does decide it wants to go and you know go like hell. So I don't know. Let's give it a twist and see if it does absolutely anything. You know what? She's rolling over a little sluggish, but I saw a little smoke come out of that pipe. That just tells me this thing wants to run. By golly, maybe I'll get my ether can out. It never hurts to have an ether can handy. If you were curious why I'm kicking the key just a little bit, just a little bit, I had the solenoid stick off camera, and I kind of want to keep that from happening again. So. Like I say, I think I'm going to get my truck out, maybe uh, put the jumpers on it, see if I can give it just a little bit more power. Maybe she'll crank up. I'm feeling kind of good about this. Thank <laughs> you. 
I could be wrong, but I thought I heard it snort just a little bit there. I'm gonna let that charge for just another few seconds and or another minute or so, and maybe I'll give it some R's and we'll try it again. I think if I could get it to roll over for more than a boat, three seconds, it would start. Okay, made a small change. I traded off my little battery charger for the big 400 amp booster, plus the pickup, plus two batteries. I can't get much more power to it, guys. That's a step in the right direction. It burned off the ether if nothing else, but I gotta make a little loop inside the cab. I got some heater hoses that are coming up in there and they are not hooked to anything. Guess what I got? Alrighty, well with that, I'm gonna just try, just for shits and grins, one more little puff of ether. I doubt it's gonna stay running at this point though. I think I'm gonna have to start cracking injector lines. It doesn't look like it's smoking like I thought it was in the first place. Although the return line's got some fuel on it. I don't know. We'll just give it a little huff. Then if it doesn't work, I'll crack the line, see if we can get some fuel to bleed through it or pump through it in the first place, and then we'll go from there. Of course, nothing wants to turn. Well guys, I've got all the fuel injectors. Well, they're not the injectors. They're the lines that go to the injectors. Whatever, never worry about that. Everything's loose. So I'm gonna go and crank this thing all around. You guys tell me if I'm getting any fuel out here. Oh yeah, I got fuel. She's playing hard to get, no doubt about that. Kind of bugs me now, we were getting smoke before, now we're not getting any smoke, so. Well, there's, I guess there's a little bit coming out of the pipe, but. Let me crack the other side, get that blood through, and maybe. I got good pressure with that fuel filter. I took the little plug off and rolled the engine over, and phew, I got diesel on everything. <laughs> Miss JT's gonna love it when I come in the house tonight. Looks like I got fuel on that side too, so now I'm uh, running out of options. Hopefully it'll start soon.
Well, friends, that's as far as I'm going with this one today. Friends, I'm going to give this one more shot today. It's really warm. It's probably close to 50 degrees out today. So I don't think yesterday it got that warm. The sun kind of disappeared. So I'm going to crack all the bleeders, crank that thing around a little bit, tighten the bleeders back up, give it a shot, give it the battery charger. One for all, all for one. Let's not stop till this bastard is done. Yeah, I like that. It's just frustrating on this tractor because I've got no lift pump that I can manually pump. I don't know who at Cat thought that was a good idea or who after Cat thought it was a good idea to take it off maybe. I don't know, but let me get all these loosened up, push some fuel through it, tighten them back up. Guys, this side I just have to do the best I can with. I can get three of them. The one behind here is really, I mean, I, I, I'll see what I can do. All right, friends, I was cranking that thing over. I think I felt a little sputter of life. I'm gonna get my battery booster hooked back up, tighten my uh, lines, give it a puff. This is the one, this is the one. living in her at one point in time.
this little bugger will move. yesterday I wasn't sure this thing was gonna run but guys miracles can happen and uh, I'll tell you what that's more of a surprise than anything like I said yesterday I thought that engine's junk she's never gonna go with a little patience looking at her all wish I could steer it so I could drive it around a little bit Maybe the uh, fuel solenoid is a little sticky. You shut the key off, it takes about 15 seconds for it to shut down. But that's okay. It at least shuts down. Let's see if it'll start back up. this runs good well there guys now I can leave you feeling comfortable about what I've done today like I say yesterday I was really feeling itchy about everything but man she came through in a pinch so guys I think that's gonna do it for me today I think uh, after that I'm gonna head somewhere where the mountains are blue and celebrate a little bit kind of make a game plan for what I'm gonna end up doing with this piece of shit cuz I got to do something with her I can't just She's better than junk to me now, so time to have a second turd Ferguson around. We'll have to think of a name for this one. I don't know. With them hips on her, I might call her Massey Kardashian, but I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments, guys. But at any rate, that is going to absolutely do it for me today. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. What the? That's it. It. Oh my God!